Well, I started practicing when I was 13, 12. The summer I was 12, I started to practice. And then I, you know, I practice a lot. A lot of people practice. Moses Hogan, he's unbelievable. Oh, I love, I love Moses Hogan. Love, love okay. his work. You see, you know, he is Moses Hogan was. Oh, he he died so so Korea young. Was. Yeah. But he was he was like my older brother. Okay, so Moses got a scholarship to Oberlin. I was in eighth grade when Moses was a senior, I think. So you know, of course, in the school, New Orleans Center for Creative Arts, which was a new arts high school at that time, my father taught there. Once again, very small of community people, artists in the city, trying to teach kids, a public school. You limited resources, but the heart was right of our, of our, of our teachers. And Moses was like, everybody loved him, had perfect pitch, could play, knew the history of music, could arrange. He got that scholarship and Kent came after him. Mm -hmm. So it's always like Moses got a scholarship to, to Oberlin. Kent got a scholarship to Eastman. So it was like, well, you need to get a scholarship. What, did, what are you going to do? I said, well, I want to go to New York. So okay, we'll see if you can get into Juilliard. And uh, I was in that line with them. So I was practicing and being serious. I had seen them practice. I knew them. I see them every day. And I, I saw Moses. And uh, then Wendell Pierce was there and Terrence Blanchard. And my brother Bradford was there. Harry Connick was younger than us, three or four or five years younger than us. We had like a lot of musicians who, who were serious, Donald Harrison. And it was only that group of us who were there at the time uh, and, and other musicians that if we went to school with who maybe didn't go on to become known, but who were also serious. And it was students of all genders, Gretchen Hogue and, and, and uh, Becky Robertson. I can just remember them, you know, and how serious everybody was mm -hmm. at that time about learning theory, singing Bach chorales, learning how to play blues. My theory teacher in high school, Bert, Dr. Bert Bro, rest in peace, taught us the Goldberg variations and Miles Davis, Funny Valentine in concert as an example of theme and variation. Wow. So it was one of those time periods when a lot of serious young people who were influenced by very serious older people. And what Terrence always says is trust in your training. You know, Terrence was taught composition by Roger Dickerson, who mm -hmm. was my father's oldest and longest best friend who loved Hendermith. And so we were in a kind of bubble environment that uh, was very, very unusual. Yeah, it, it sounds it. And by the way, for, for listeners who don't know Moses Hogan, go find out about him. Really yeah. one of the most amazing choral directors and composers and arrangers ever. And what he did with, well, particularly um, he's well known for his arrangements of spirituals. They're the most beautiful. And the choral, the choir that he put together is, to my money, one of the greatest choirs ever assembled. Right. Yeah, amen. And, you know, I would mess with Moses. I was always teasing. I was the type of kid who was always teasing and messing with people, you know, because my father was so serious. And I always teased him and played around with him. That wasn't really his personality. Right. So with Moses and all them, I was younger than him. I was always aggravating him and teasing him and telling, you know, <laughs> telling them what they couldn't do and playing with them. Even as he got older and even later when I was in New York, it was always, you know, messing with him. And we had, we had just had a lot of fun, man, playing around. Mm -hmm. Just... It was, yeah, it was a good, it was, we had, we had a lot of good time. Right. But underneath that was a great deal of seriousness. Wendell Pierce, very serious. We always messing with him about, man, you always call ourselves the big boys. So you can't be one of the big boys. You in theater, man, you got to be a musician. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so <laughs> it was all kind of crazy stuff we would do. But the competition was around who could learn the most, who could be, uh, develop their virtuosity to the highest degree, who could make, our teachers, who could make my father say, you could play, or break bro, our theory teachers say, mm -hmm. you can hear. We were very much about you know, wanting to impress them and, and make right. them feel like we are not wasting our time with y'all. Right, and and they did not give those compliments easily either. You really had, oh, no, to, had to earn it. Oh, no. Harry Connick and I were laughing he, he, we, just last week. We, we saw each other somewhere. We were, we were in Minnesota, and we, he was talking about when you would play in a, in a class, a recital class, my father and Bert Bro, our theory teacher, would be sitting like on either side of you, and they would always be like, <laughs> and it didn't matter <laughs> what you played when they came. Right. And he was listening, like, you know, intently, like, and when they finished, came out of their stare and having their hands over their mouths, they always tore you up. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? What is the form of that? You don't know what you're playing. 
you can't, you know, you knew you were going to go through the gauntlet. But uh, our vocal music teacher was great too, Lorraine Alfaro. It was her name, man. We tease, tease her, but she had to, we had to, we had to all take all the classes too. Mm-hmm. We had a vocal music class. We had to yeah. learn how to sing. We learned spirituals in that class. And we were in a, in a dilapidated building. Like if you could have saw the environment of it. <laughs> right, right, right. And it was one of the great classics of, of all time. It was very much a community thing. Oh, 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 oh. 